Bill Gleason and I go back many, many years. His scholarly works are well known to most any serious student of Aikido. Bill, thanks for being with us. Because everything in the universe is already perfect, except human beings. We're the only ones who haven't realized our potential and therefore saying that, we, that Aikido is a way of uh, completing the universe is saying that we have to realize our true nature and manifest it. In Osensei's viewpoint, it's quite clear that this was probably the main focus of, of what he felt about Aikido and what he wanted to create with it. He saw it as some kind of radical transformation of uh, being, and that meant not an individual's being only. Of course, that's included because the whole is made up of individuals. But he was talking about some, you know, like I said, the realization of love, uh, serving for the completion of the universe. And I think an awful lot of people are out there doing Nikio over and over again, thinking maybe they're serving for the completion of the universe. Or actually, this is where my heart tears a little bit, wishing they were. But their teachers have just shown them, no, bring your hand a little here, drop your elbow a little bit. You know, yeah. not that stuff, but so how do we help those people who are looking for something more than the physical practice? Uh, I don't know, that's kind of where I'd start. Yeah, yeah, I understand where you want to go. Um, and as I think I've stated before, uh, the, the, I think the problem or the, the subject matter or however you want to phrase it, uh, can't be uh, divided into two categories, uh, the uh, martial or physical, if you will, and the spiritual, because they're historically inseparable. And actually, if we don't understand uh, the nature of Aikido itself, uh, certainly in the terms that O-sensei uh, expressed it and, and manifested it, then uh, there's no way we're going to know how to practice. And if we don't know how to practice it, then, uh, as my teacher in Japan, Yamaguchi Sensei used to often say, he said, and to your point, uh, merely repeating techniques forever is never going to produce Aikido. A certain amount, this is a very physical art that has been created because O Sensei reshaped the techniques of Aiki Jiu Jitsu according to the Kototama principle. And uh, the result was an art that you could practice with full force and full contact without injury. And therefore you were able to uh, develop yourself uh, without any holding back or pulling back. You were able to develop a, a greater degree of sensitivity, a greater degree of intuitive perception and so forth. Budo is also a subdivision of Shinto. And here's where we get to the, to the unifying factor because the unifying factor of the spiritual and the physical is principle. And the principle is, in Japanese terms, it is the principle of Aiki. Uh, but it's existed since time immemorial through uh, far back as we know. I mean, it's, it's the foundational principle of all the major philosophies in the world, beginning with Indian Hinduism, it's considered as a trinity. And there you get to what O Sensei talked about with the term Sangen, which means the three origins. That is the essence of Aikido principle, and it's 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 also a universal principle. It's been around forever, even though modern science can't prove it yet, so they won't accept it. But uh, that was passed down through the Buddha and then through the Bodhidharma when he brought the Buddha's teaching to China. And it was already existing in Taoism at that time. They called it the Tao. Uh, and they said the Tao is neither emptiness nor is it polarity or yin and yang, if you will. Uh, but it's something which cannot be defined because it's three, it's not two. And when you call it two, it's three. Or when you call it three, it's one. Uh, it, never, it can't be grasped. And this is what in Japanese is called himitsu, which means literally secret. But the, the etymology of the word from a Shinto point of view is himizu, which is fire and water, which is uh, the main expressions of yin and yang. Uh, 
this principle, which which Olson say borrowed the word from the ancient history of Aiki and uh, used it for the creation of Aikido. If we don't understand that this principle is the foundation of both the spiritual and the physical, then as you say, we end up repeating techniques endlessly and uh, the training doesn't happen. Now you, you meant for performing the will of God, for, uh, re, uh, con, what completion of the universe. These are the, one and the same thing. Uh, this is uh, the easiest way to talk about it, is completion of the universe because everything in the universe is already perfect except human beings. We're the only ones who haven't realized our potential and therefore saying that we, that Aikido is a way of uh, completing the universe is saying that we have to realize our true nature and manifest it. And uh, in Osensei's uh, viewpoint, it's quite clear that this was probably the main focus of, of what he felt about Aikido and what he wanted to uh, create with it. Uh, Osensei was the strongest martial artist in Japan, or at least among, among three or four of the strongest. All of the rest of them were also students of his teacher, which was Takeda Sotaku, because he was, he was a giant. And he was a giant because he had mastered the principle of Aiki. But as Osensei, as Osensei expressed, uh, the principle of Aiki can be used in any way you choose. And with it. you were, had great power without effort, but you broke bones. You, 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 uh, you hurt people. And that's where Osensei went in a different direction with this. So the, the question of why he created Aikido is, is kind of pretty obvious because he wanted to go in a different direction with this. Uh, Perhaps I can, you know, in the process of creating Aikido, as I said earlier, the tools that he used were the Kototama, which he studied with Deguchi Wanisaburo, his spiritual teacher. And I might add that uh, Deguchi got most of his Kototama teachings from a much earlier uh, work called uh, uh, um, Kototama no Hisho, which means the secrets of the Kototama, written by a man named Yamaguchi Shido. Uh, who was a Shinto priest, uh, a book which I have and uh, have read through it. It's uh, so much of what Austin is teaching. It just, it's just word for word there. And, and it's all about the creation of the universe through the Kokotama. The of, of Aikido form was what people in traditional Japanese Budo since the beginning of it had been trying to do, which was to take the sword form, which of course was the foundation of Japanese Budo, and make their barehanded forms, which they all had, conform to it. Make the, make the barehanded form be the same as the sword form. None of them could do it. Every time they tried to do it, the principle might have been there, but it boiled down to grappling. Oh, since they kept the sword form, thus the flowing, beautiful form that we have in Aikido. And he was able to do that through his genius and his enlightenment. Um, kind of look at least at the very fundamentals of the, the thought of Kototama in order to, to understand not only that spiritual foundation, but how we need to practice Aikido. Um, the, the, what's called the parent sound is the sound of Su, which uh, Osensei talked a lot about. And Su is is pure movement without boundaries. It's, it's, it's the absolute lack of resistance to movement. So therefore you have kind of like absolute movement, which in practical terms becomes stillness and movement and movement and stillness. And this is where you begin your Aikido practice. This is where you begin your training. You learn to be completely relaxed in body and yet completely aware in mind. And this is, very similar to the kind of practice that some people do in meditation. Uh, then from there, within that state of being, if you will, a center is established. And that center is the life will. The life will is the Kututama of E, which is if you've ever seen the symbol for Su, it's a circle with a check mark in the center. I think everybody's seen that. That check mark in the center is the Kututama of E, which is the life will. 
And Su is the revolving of all universal energy. It's called Ah, Me, Ah is myself. It's also heaven. And Me is revolving. So when, once you have that center, when the mind comes into the equation, when concentration on an individual level comes into the equation, the life will, which is water key, gets a little spark of fire key inside of it and movement which is refined in time and space begins. When that happens, will becomes intent. And intent, uh, the dictionary defines very well, as the mind that is present at the moment of action. In other words, from your center, if you will, going out at all moments, at all times, in all directions from your center, what, what in, uh, Aikido people might call key extension, is, oh, since they never used the word extension, they used the word expansion, because it's not going in one direction, it's going in every direction. And he stated very clearly that before, during, and after, every technique, you should be expanding your key in the six directions. Now, who's doing it? If we don't understand why that's true and feel it in our body through the practice of doing it, then we're not going to get the very, very foundation of Aikido practice. And as you say, we end up th seeing things on a linear basis. There's also a horizontal basis, which is me as opposed to him. Not trying to either compete with my partner, nor am I trying to merge with or harmonize with him. A teaching which Olsen said never taught. He always taught you should be trying to harmonize with heaven and earth. You never sit harmony with your partner. The very idea of trying to harmonize with your partner is an intention. Intention is forbidden in Buddhism or Buddha. It'll get you killed every time. You've got to live in the moment. So what you're doing is harmonizing with the principle of yin and yang, or the Tao, or uh, Aiki, whichever term you choose, and you become like a magnet that your partner conforms to you. Harmony is established, but it's a result. It's not a goal. Somebody asks, what is Aikido? The term that way back when I first started that, and I've heard it ever since, over and over again, that, that the beginner, that the would-be want to practice Aikido person asks, what is Aikido? And he's told, oh, it's using your partner's power against him. Well, you know what? Well, I, I, I went through a period where I thought, well, that's nonsense after believing it, and then came full turnaround, I realized that's yeah, actually true, but it's not what I thought it was. Using your, how can you possibly use your partner's power against him if you are using your own power, if you are giving your power out? It's impossible. You can only use his power against him if you are totally receiving him. This gets real tricky. If you're putting any force into your partner whatsoever, you can't use his power. It's impossible. Just like in the, in the, in the Chinese arts, they say the first thing is yielding. But then people start to collapse. And when you collapse, again, you've, you've created the same dilemma. So you have to learn how to receive with your mind in a state of total relaxation, which can only happen, again, is if your key is expanded in the six directions, beginning with being rooted in heaven and earth. Now, heaven and earth, is, is kind of, you know, these big flamboyant terms, but what does it really mean? It means that your spine is stretched up straight, pulling the fascia from the roots of the back of your head all the way down your back to your heels. It's pulled up and you've learned to stretch the spine up and down and you carry that with you vertically wherever you go, even if you're bending sideways or forward. You're that straightness is still there like a silverback gorilla and you watch visit videos of Osen saying you're gonna that's exactly what you're gonna see I don't think you're gonna see too many other people these days trying to move like that because they don't have that concept the body has to move as a unit and it moves as a unit because the arms never move separately from the body trying to make power with the hala makes you turn from the waist which, by the way, the Chinese people will tell you you should do, but it's another mistranslation of terms because what they mean by waist is everything from the diaphragm down to the inguinal ligament. They mean torso. 
and so much of this stuff that gets mistaken in the, in the Japanese teaching is also from mistranslations. The word te in Japanese means hand, but it also means arm. It also means all of this. Koshi, we take it as hips, but it means whole, all of this. It means all of this whole thing up to the, up to the diaphragm. It's the torso. Uh, so the idea of making power by turning the, the, from the waist, it, all you're using is shoulder power. You've got to make power, as the Chinese say, by turning the legs, by letting the legs sink and fall and by rotating them at the femur. When you do that, the hips will not turn, but the hollow will turn. And you can experiment and you'll find out that it has about way more power than you could ever get by turning the hara, which is the distributor of the energy which comes from the legs. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is if you want to get the spiritual out of this, you must also have the physical, because they're the same thing. What you're doing is merging with, when the o -sensei says heaven and earth, he's talking about the energy of the kototama. He's talking about merging with the energy of Su, merging with the energy of E, merging with the energy of A, which is to have your body automatically create spiral form. The arm, for example, you should never move from, you should never move your, from the wrist. You never move your wrist. What moves first, and the only thing that really moves, is the elbow. The wrist stays where it is all the time. That creates a spiral. When you move from the wrist, you don't have spirals. And therefore, you're not manifesting the kototama of A. If you try to practice some kind of uh, quote-unquote kimusubi by blending with your partner, you will fail unless he wants to be nice. But what you can do if you really move with kototama, which is to have yin yang in all your movement, your partner will be stuck to you. He will be stuck to you like it was monkey grip glue. You know, it's just not, it, it, that is what Kimusubi is about. So what I'm saying, if, if it's, is that the way of practicing correctly will lead to a realization of these dimensions in the sense that you're transformed. You learn the futility of competition. You learn the futility of building ego through repetition. When I went there in 1970, Osensei had just, 1970, Osensei had just passed away. And uh, all of his, what I would term in that respect, first generation students after he had passed away, were still there teaching. You, know, you had better and people and worse, more talented and less talented, but they were all really amazing. They all had something really, really special. And in their students, you saw a lot less of it. The next generation, it's gone. What happened? If, if, the, if the art is being passed down, then you should have some people at least rising up to levels equal to their teacher or above. Uh, I don't want to uh, say bad things because I don't believe this is, a, this is intentional in most cases anyway. I think it's a cultural thing. I lived in Japan for 10 years. I'm, I'm well aware of how the Japanese mind works. They believe it is a tremendous disservice to teach somebody something. They believe that they are robbing you of the chance to discover it for yourself. Uh, of course, it's, if you go to really great teachers, you find that they treat it a little more like, uh, well, there's a, chick, there's a Buddhist story about the chicken and, and the egg. You know, that the, the egg, need, the chick inside the egg needs to be born. So it's thumping on the egg to get out, and the mother hears it, so starts pecking on the outside. But if she goes too vigorously, it's premature, dies. If she's too slow, it suffocates, dies. So the teacher that's doing something really wants to pass something down is not giving it all immediately, but is getting the student ready and feeding them as they can learn from it. I don't think that has happened. Uh, you know, Aikido is the only art that supposedly doesn't have solo training. You're starting off with a partner, uh, which in some ways has, a, has some good points to it, but I mean, you don't know what you're doing yet. Um, 
every other art is teaching you how to move correctly first. I think we need to, to, to have that as a part of our training from the beginning. But we also have to be able to teach how to move correctly. And believe me, this is not such a simple thing. Um, people train for, as you say, 20 or 30 years. They might even have beautiful form on the outside, but it has no content. The reason it has no content is because they have the outside spirals, but there's no inside spirals. They don't know how to move from inside. They're moving from the outside. And I can't tell you in this kind of interview, because I'd have to actually show you, uh, but I, believe, I am passing this down in my seminars, and I am not the only one. There are other people who are starting to work with this. I believe Aikido is, is being transformed by a handful of people right now, and, and it's only going to grow because people are searching. People want the real thing. And there's a whole lot of people that, that don't want just uh, to be able to kick somebody and knock them down. They actually want to learn something bigger and more important than that. All I can tell you is, is that it is there and it needs to be done and it needs to be done solo and then it needs to be put into your Aikido techniques to make them whole again. And uh, basically it's studying how the body moves with yin and yang. It is not different than what the Chinese were doing with Tai Chi, still are doing with Tai Chi. But as in Tai Chi today as well, there's very few people that know it anymore. Uh, it's, it's become a repetition of forms there as well. Uh, probably more people that know it there because it's been documented for, for so, so many years. Not Aikido, nothing's been documented ever. Uh, have, you have to seek out someone who can teach you this way of moving. Uh, I can just, I can say this, right? It can't happen unless you are completely independent of your partner. Now, this is a hard pill to swallow for Aikido people because they think they must do something to their partner. You are not, you're must, you must be completely independent. Uh, as I once heard Sao Tome Sensei say, uh, you don't put any pressure into the point of contact. Well, that's absolutely true. But take it even a step further. Not only do you no pressure, you are acting as if that person was not even there because you are totally receiving his power. And how do you do that? You do that because one side of the contact point is yin and the other side is yang, and you're finding that balance point in your movement so that he becomes stuck to you and he is giving you all his power and you're just receiving it and giving it a new direction, thus using his power against him. Is the actual the real thing? <laughs> What is it that's most important for people who are looking for the true value of Aikido to understand? I'd say if you could give us that in a sentence, then you know we could bottle it and sell it. <laughs> well, everything in Aikido is or should be majorly focused on the development of key. This is the foundation. And as I've said, the development of key is developed by learning how to create stronger intent and to manifest that in your body, how to expand your energy in six directions. And it needs to be practiced as a separate practice in and of itself. When you can do that sufficiently, you, be, you become able to receive power without crashing and without an ounce of uh, tightness in your body this is just this is truly mind over matter and that's where it begins from there then the yin and yang is born at the point of contact and you start to have spiral movement this you have to have a teacher for but the beginning is is key and key doesn't make power you know key doesn't make power key is mind and mind makes connectivity in the body when the body is connected this is what uh, Koichi Tohei called Shin Shin Toitsu, when the body is connected with the mind, when they become one, then when, with that unified being, you move with yin and yang, or in tune with nature, as Osensei said, then power comes out from the balance of yin and yang in your movement. It's not through key, it's the key that makes you connected. 
makes you makes you uh, able to be an entity which is both soft and and impenetrable at the same time. Which Tohei talked a lot about, uh, you know, keeping one point. Uh, and of course, he had his thing about key in daily life. Uh, it's it's part of it, but it's way not the whole thing. Uh, keeping one point is uh, really it's a spiritual practice. It's a practice for meditation. Uh, in order for Aikido, you got not only you keep center, but you got you've got to move as a spiral, and you've got to stop using your body movement to create power. Your body, the body, the power comes from the inside. It doesn't come from your outside movement. There's two things: there's transporting the body, and there's moving the body. First, you've got to learn how to transport the body because that's where the grace comes from. That's where a beginner needs to start. But once you've been training for a number of years, you need how to learn to move from the inside. This is moving the body. It's a different thing. And as far as Aikido in daily life, as far as taking that into daily life, you know, I think about the way the systems are set up today. You have, you know, Shodan, Nidan, Sandan, this kind of stuff, right? which has become kind of I don't know. <laughs> not sure how much value it's having these days because people are tested for the same thing at Sandown as they're tested for a showdown. It should be all, should be totally different. Originally, it was, there were no dons, it was dens. It was shoden, chuden, okuden. Den means transmission. So at shoden, it means you have received all of the things that are on the curriculum of show or beginning. And same thing for middle, same thing for the, the end. So it's actually been passed down. And the result of that is what? You are transformed. So when you reach Okuden, which is now a spiritual level, Aikido in daily life is not about keeping one point. That's kind of a self-centered thing, if you want to ask me. If it's, it's, uh, it's not about keeping one point. It's about manifesting I in your daily life. And what is I? I is infinite expansion which is abundantly overflowing compassion for all things. And the center of it, which makes it, makes it exist, the root, that's wisdom. So that root wisdom, and then this is, becomes a part of everything you do and the reason why you do things. That's Aikido in daily life. It has nothing to do with running, running around looking at your navel. <laughs> Summarize in two ways. First of all, where do you start in your practice? All right, now, in the terms of O-sensei, uh, he said, if you don't stand on the floating bridge of heaven, you can't do Aikido. What is that, right? Quite, it's, it's the floating bridge of heaven is your verticality, your two sides, your front and your back, six directions that he said to expand in. So standing on the floating bridge of heaven means to have a stance which is relaxed and is expanding key in all directions. That's, we've already talked about the creation of intent, creation of key. Um, that's where your practice begins, this stance. And then you have to start learning how to use the balance of opposites. Uh, the, the, the message, which, is the, which is really ties into everything that Osensei was saying spiritually as well, is that you have to become one with or blend with the energies of heaven and earth. And what does that really mean? It, it means to, to, uh, to be the universe, as he said. Right? And to be the universe is to get rid of self. Because that's, that's the only thing that's stopping you from being the universe, is having a self. So you have to get rid of ego. You have to allow yourself to be independent, but not separate. That's nice. Okay. Uh, so you never put yourself against your partner in your practice. Your gauge is what Osun say called uh, masakatsu agatsu katsu hayabi. Masakatsu is correct practice in my interpretation. Agatsu is Teach yourself. In other words, to get rid of the ego, to get rid of the competition, to, to work on being the universe, to work on blending. It's just, just, start with, just start with heaven and earth. 
just just that being vertical in your practice because every time you start trying to compete with somebody or muscle something or do any kind of you've already lost your verticality right so just start with that I mean, my teacher never like different than a lot of other teachers didn't allow you to do techniques with force if you did them with force he would stop you right now no you can't, you can't practice that way and he was absolutely incredible uh, he was his Aikido was the most beautiful I've ever seen. He was so soft, and yet he was so powerful. And it, not being allowed to do things by force, over time you could begin to to feel that what is natural movement. I mean, in the end, you you your your understanding if it's going to be valid, if it's going to be real, if it's going to be whole, if it's going to be indestructible. It has to be both subjective and objective. Now the subjective comes from doing it and doing it and doing it. But at a certain point, you've got to objectively understand what it is that you're doing and why. Saying that, we, that Aikido is a way of uh, completing the universe is saying that we have to realize our true nature and manifest it. In Osensei's viewpoint, it's quite clear that this was probably the main focus of, of what he felt about Aikido and what he wanted to create with it.